You guys have probably realized by now that Shelby and I like to set our sights pretty high for goals on this series, and this video is going to be no different. I want to work on getting us Amulets of Fury, which is a pretty big upgrade over what we have right now. Now obviously I'm not the crafter, I bought all those gems and stuff for Shelby, but I'm not the one who's actually getting the experience. So what can I do to help, aside from the seaweed runs and stuff that I'm doing right now? Believe it or not, the Mauritania Hard Diary is the best thing I can do right now, and that's for two reasons. One, it'll give me access to a faster teleport to Barrows, and also just more runes from the chest, which can be directly converted into Tokel to buy the Onyx, which is super nice. But two, the actual items from Barrows itself will be very helpful for God Wars. So this is kind of a two birds, one stone situation. There are some pretty high stat requirements for it, but luckily one of the most difficult ones is Piety, which we already have. The only really slow one is Agility. So that's the first thing I'm going to do, start working on those skill requirements. Of course in my downtime I'm going to continue to try and AFK some Dagonoths to get myself more Ancient Shards and Totem Pieces because we need as many charges in that Arclet as possible if we're trying to get two Zami Spears from God Wars. Medium Clue... <laughs> Garbage. Despite having some of them, there's still a pretty good amount of stat and quest requirements that I do not yet have before we can do this, and I figure I might as well start knocking them out. First things first, I need to get 60 agility so that I can stop using the wildy course and move on to the seer's course to start getting marks of grace. Okay, this course sucks so much more than I remember, uh, but that is level 60 agility, which means I can finally move on to the seer's village course. I really don't know why the fail rate is just so ridiculously high here, but uh, you know what? I'm done with it, so it's all right. 49 farming. I'm finally getting around to doing some tree runs here. I'm giving most of my seeds to uh, Guides for Us All still, but I need 53 for this achievement diary, so gotta get there somehow. I'm actually in a pretty strategic location because there's two oak trees over here, and I need to AFK for a little bit. So I'm gonna chop these oak trees so that I can bank some logs to turn into planks to train construction, because I think for the diaries I also need 50 construction. Hey, there's 60 woodcutting. Well, just... Is this man... Crashing my oak trees? Who does this? And there we go. That is 50 farming. Just a couple levels left. All right. Hey, uh, hey, Shelby. Hey, what's up? Uh, 66 agility. Can I get a pog? I'm going to give you a nice fat poggers for that one, my friend. And after a long, grueling, boring day of agility, there is level 68. This is not actually the reason I want, not for the Elven Overpass, but there is a shortcut for Mauritania Hard that requires 71. Luckily for me, agility potions are a lot easier for us to access now, so I'm just gonna agility pot the rest of the way up because three more levels is like six or seven more hours minimum. Don't think it's quite enough for full graceful, but I did get 170 marks of grace, so I'm gonna turn those in in a minute. First things first, gotta restock on pineapples for Ultra Compost. All right, so still missing a couple of pieces, but uh, three pieces of Graceful is going to be super nice for any future questing. It's time to farm. For subscribers, that is. If you guys aren't subscribed, seriously, I'm trying to hit 100k by the end of the year. I'd really appreciate it. You know what's better than three pieces of Graceful? That's right, Tithe Farm, which I'm walking away from because I forgot that I needed to get some gardening supplies for it, but... I'm going to be doing Tithe Farm because it's better than me trying to keep rummaging around getting more tree seeds or fruit tree seeds, and this way I can keep funneling them to guides for us all. So I'm just going to do this for three levels. It really shouldn't be that bad. A lot of you guys probably have never really seen someone do Tithe Farm or have never done it yourselves because it's honestly not really worth doing for most accounts, but it's pretty simple. You just go around, you plant seeds, you water them. If you do it properly, you can do it a bit faster than I'm doing, but I'm just going for 20 at a time and I'm going to do five harvests. Once you have everything planted, they've made this really easy, <laughs> so you can just left-click everything now. And with all the Runelight plugins, you know what? It's not that bad. All right, that is the first round of 100 Golovanova fruits. I don't know how much XP I'm going to get from this, but I'm hoping it's a lot. All right, 9,000. That's actually pretty decent, and 26 points. That gets me up to 51 farming. It looks like I'm probably going to have to do, like, three or four more rounds of it. Another 9,000 experience. Dude, I love it. I, l I don't know why. I'm kind of enjoying this right now. And it looks like one more harvest should get me like almost the exact amount of experience that I need. 9,046 experience is what I need. And I think I get 9,060. 
yeah, almost spot on the amount of XP that I needed there. That is level 53 farming, which means I can now grow bitter cat mushrooms, which is, I think, the thing I needed for the Mauritania Hard Diary. So, very, very nice. There's a few more skilling requirements that I need, and in fact, I need one before I can even do one of the quests, and that is 50 construction. So I did gather up all of those logs earlier, and now it's time to turn them all into planks. I think since I'm already on Zaya, I'm just going to head over here to the woodcutting guild, since I did get 61 woodcutting while chopping those oaks, and just make my planks here. It's probably a lot closer to a bank than the Varrock mill is. I can teleport back and forth from that, but honestly, I don't have too many law runes right now, and don't really feel like buying more. Alright, so I made all of the planks that I needed, or at least all the planks that I think that I'm going to need. And uh, if you take a look at my inventory, you guys will notice that I have some eggs. My good friend, Guides for Us All, <laughs> loves these eggs, don't you? Don't do this to me. But we're just, just gonna, don't. We're just going to see. Maybe don't we you get dare. a piece of the evil chicken outfit, and that would just be hilarious. Actually, this is prayer XP, I totally forgot about that. Don't do it, please God. Don't let this happen. Oh, okay. you're oh, a lucky thank day. God. Okay, all Oof. right. I was going to have a freak out. So now that I have the planks made, I'm going to go over here and start doing some mahogany homes. I've never actually done this before, so it might be pretty meh with oak planks, but it should give me way more XP per plank than I would otherwise be getting. Luckily for me, there's also a plugin in the plugin hub for this that works pretty much like the quest helper, where... If I just go over here into the house, it highlights all the things that I need to remove and replace, and it tells me exactly where to go. So, pretty easy. The main XP you get for doing these is when you finish a task, you talk to the person, whoever owns the house, and then they give you a pretty nice XP drop. For me, it's 1250. It's probably a lot more for the higher tiered contracts. So, some of these contracts are actually in Hasidius, and right now, I have really no great way of getting there, aside from using my Karet's memoirs, which isn't even that good of a telly. I thought about it, and then I remembered there's actually a house portal in Hasidius. Which means if I just change my POH location there, and I should have the construction level to do that, I can just home telly and walk outside, which would also be a pretty close telly to the farming patch when I start using that. One of the really nice things about buying all those gems is that we basically have infinite dueling rings. Which means I can always just teleport to Clan Wars, get my run back if I'm doing something that's teleport heavy, run heavy. It's nice. Okay, I don't want to hear a single comment about how, hey genius, I could have just drank the cup of tea that they offer you at the end of the task to get full run energy. I've never done Mahogany Homes before, okay? Shut up. I, I'm new to this. And there we go, that should be 50 construction. Dude, our total level is actually starting to climb quite a bit. I don't know, man. Pretty nice. 50 construction. That is what I needed for the quest. I literally used every single plank except for one, so I guess I calculated that perfectly. I'm going to start knocking out a couple of these quests. First one is Ghosts Ahoy. Honestly, I probably should have done this a lot sooner because this just makes getting here a little bit easier. Alright, well apparently I just had to start Great Brain Robbery to use this patch. I always thought you had to complete it, so hopefully this doesn't die because we don't have that many watermelon seeds. As it turns out, I still need 55 mining, which I totally just blanked from my mind until this point, so I figure I might as well get it over here at the sandstone mine, that way I can get some extra buckets, or at least the ability to buy them later, to help guides for us all with his crafting grind. Alright, there we go, what feels like one eternity of several different skilling grinds later, I think I now finally have all the stats to be able to do Mortania Hard Diary. I just have to do one or two more quests, I think. Also, rest in peace to my cash stack, because I think I am going to go ahead and, uh, Claim the sand. Do I even have enough buckets in here? Okay, never mind. I was going to claim the sand. Don't have any buckets. All right, one of the two things you have to grow for the diaries are these watermelons, and it looks like they have successfully grown, which is nice. Now I just have to hope the mushroom did. Nice. I, this is like the two things I hate if they fail because you have to wait a ton of time for them to grow again. So that's two of the hard tasks knocked out. Now we just have to go to that quest. And interesting thing about this quest... I was taking a look at the required items you need for in aid of the <laughs> however the heck you say this, and one of the items you need is a mithril bar. Now that's difficult because, while I have the level to mine mithril now, I don't have the smithing level and honestly don't want to blow a bunch of money. Luckily for me, way back in like episode 2, Guides are all killed the crazy archaeologist, and he dropped a muddy key, which has a 100% chance of giving a mithril bar. Calculated. Alright, there's innate of the done. 
So I think that's all the quests that I need. I'm going to start knocking out the actual achievement diaries now. Alright, that should be the easy diaries completed. On to the medium. Woo, finished my favorite portion of the medium diaries. AFK for 20 minute simulator. Now I just have to move on to the hard diaries. All of those long, hard hours, training agility, have all led up to this one singular moment. Amazing. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah, that was a real, real hard trek there. I literally did nothing. Just literally nothing. It just let me straight through. And I get 100 bowstrings for it. That's pretty chill, dude. Alright, this is the last thing I need to do. Chop and burn a mahogany log eventually. Alright, I'll jump cut to when I get it. Oh, of course, yeah, and I get two immediately. Alright, well, and burn it. And that should be the last step of the Mauritania Hard Diaries. There it is. Let's go claim our reward. Now, there are about a million reasons why this is so good. But the main ones are these. I get to get some free buckets of slime and bone meal every day from Robin, which is nice. Where the heck is La Saber? There she is. Okay. I get some free bone meal every day from Robin, which is nice. Because I'm going to need that to fund my bone crusher that I got. Now that's going to be really nice for even just AFKing Dagonoths and just Slayer in general. On top of that, I get 7.5% more Slayer XP in the Slayer Tower when I'm on task. And I get this nice, fun little teleport here. And this is going to be how I'm getting to Barrows because it is right over there. And 50% more runes from Barrows. That's the big ticket right there. That's how we're going to get the Tokel for the Furies. I'm excited to start Barrows. But first, let me use these lamps, because I'm also really excited to just get some free Herb Lore XP. I mean, who isn't? There's 7,500, and I think this one is like, yeah, 15k. So that's another, what, 25k Herb Lore XP gets me all the way up to level 55, and I can make my own super strengths. I know, I know, no one likes LMS. Don't worry, I'm not going to be here for too long. I picked up this magic shortbow that guides for us all got from a clue scroll, and I'm here to get an MSB scroll and actually buy rune arrows to use this time. Because, uh, I need them. This is gonna be the way that I kill Aram, and it just seems like the best way to go. So, we'll try it out. Hopefully it works well. Quite possibly the most absolute Chad setup you'll ever see for someone going to Barrows, but you know what? It works. <laughs> the nice thing about this too is I'll be getting a little bit of magic experience, and the extra death runes I get, I might use for something else in the next video, but I guess we'll see. Let's go do some chests, maybe grab a couple of items, and just see how many runes we end up getting. So, we're starting on 60kc. Not sure how many I'm going to do in this video specifically, mostly just because I've already spent a lot of time skilling, but I guess we'll see. Ooh, that is exactly what we need right there. 563 chaos runes in a single chest. More of that, please. Well, I've been timing the past few Barrows runs that I have done. First of all, what's in the chest? 440. Oh my god, that's beautiful. So I've been timing the past couple of runs, and it seems like I'm able to get somewhere between 8 to 10 runs per hour, which is still not great. 10 is decent, but it's more likely going to lean towards 8. It's better than it was before, at least. The nice thing to consider is that even though it's only 8 runs per hour, it's 8 runs per hour with 50% increased runes from the chest. And that's the main reason we're here, is to get Chaos runes and potentially Death runes to be able to turn into Tokel. Items are great, and there's definitely a lot of items that could make God Wars easier for us, but the main reason I'm here is for the runes. Hey, 70 magic. I don't know if that level means anything, but it's always nice seeing a flat number. Oh, I accidentally screwed up my percentage on that one, but that is a tank helmet. Guthan's helm. Piece of the Guthan set is also, of course, just nice to have. That is our first tank helmet. That's going to be very, very useful at Bandos. Ooh. On the KC 73, of course. Carol's crossbow. That's actually kind of an interesting item. Because if I get myself some bolt racks, which are buyable, that's definitely just a better version of the MSB, which I totally wish that we had prior to me doing a two and a half hour fight cape. Well, as I was saying, there is buyable ammo for this, and they actually only cost 50 coins each. Now, this shop does go up in price pretty fast, but if I just buy 50 per world, it's not even bad. 
The Cabo is straight up just a better version of the Magic Shortbow, even better than the Imbued version, and the Bolt Racks have higher range strength than Rune Arrows, so it's just all around better. Thinking about it now, having this also means that there is the potential that we could unlock the Jad Slayer tasks, which are insane amounts of Slayer XP. And now that we have a decent and reasonable to use weapon, I don't know man, it might be worth it. Ooh. Okay. That's a second Aram's robe skirt. That means Shelby and I can both have one now for whenever we're doing mage things. Not that great, but you know what? I'll take it. Kind of hard to complain with that. Oh, yes. That is huge. We're definitely already made up for that dry streak we had way back in the beginning of this account when we first started Barrows. Guthan's body, huge for two reasons. One, let me tell you out here first before I take a bunch of freaking damage showing you. Look at the defensive stat increase on this thing. Plus 51 range, 41 stab, 25 slash, and 22 crush over the Varix Brassard, which is massive. Like, that is absolutely massive. On top of that, that's our second piece of Guthans now, which is also pretty huge. Alright, this is going to be Barrow's chest number 100. Hey, speaking of 100, did you guys know I'm trying to reach 100k subscribers by the end of the year? Please subscribe. Now, originally, this isn't something I was going to do, but there is one more thing that I want to do before I wrap this video up. Of course, we're not done with Barrows on the account. I just want to take a little bit of a break. And that one thing is replacing the Berserker Helm with the Neat's Not Helm. It's a really minor upgrade, but the reason we didn't get it originally is because we just didn't have the skilling stats to do the quest. But obviously, that's not really a problem anymore. This thing just pathed into me while I was doing this. Am I about to die? Okay, no, but that's a lot of damage. Man, if I was a hardcore, that would have been pretty alarming. All right, Helm of Neat's Not. Very nice to have. A bit of an upgrade over the Berserker Helm. A bit more defensive. Prayer bonus. It's just nice to have, I guess. Definitely going to put it to use a lot in the next video, which is going to be pretty much exclusively PVMing.